You might remember that little robot you saw last year, the Anki Cosmo. Well, this in front of us right now is its new, smarter successor, and it's about as close as you can get to having a pet robot. Inside the box you're getting four things, the cube, the vector, instructions, and a charging station. Within about a minute of Vector powering on for the first time, there were three things that I noticed, three things that he does, that make him feel just that little bit more alive. These giant eyes on the front give the robot a way to express himself. When he's excited they light up, and when he's running low on charge they get droopy and sad. When you speak to Vector, he uses his directional microphones to identify the source of the sound and turn to face you. And the third thing is that he seems quite aware of his surroundings. When I put him on a table and asked him to come towards me, Vector would stop before falling off the edge and almost jerk backwards with a shocked look on his face, kind of like a person would. You really feel the effort that has gone into making something that feels more like a pet than a toy. He is always on, will wait for you when you go to work, and greet you when you get back. It would always catch me off guard when I would sit down and Vector would come right up to me, look at my face with those giant eyes, and then call me by my name. He makes continuous robotic noises while exploring the environment, as if observing what's around. And if you've had enough, you can either tell him to be quiet, or give him a stroke. That'll do it too. The reason the robot is able to do all this is that, even given his diminutive size, this thing is packed with sensors. From a capacitive touch sensor on the back to quad microphones and an IR blaster, four drop protection sensors on the bottom, and six axes gyro awareness. All this tech means that if you turn on the TV behind him, Anki uses the microphones to find out where the sound is coming from, its wheels to turn and face it, and then its motion sensors to detect that something is happening, so its eyes will switch to a more quizzical look. Now, this is all well and good, but what does Vector actually do? For this, let's take a quick look at the app. At the top it shows you a sensory feed, and a full page of stats, which I think is a nice touch. For me, seeing the numbers tick up gives me a tangible reason to want to stroke it, or let it loose in a new room, and a long-term reason to stick around. And the app splits his functionality into what I would say are two primary categories, utilities and entertainment. You can ask him questions like what is the tallest building, or who is the President of the United States? But the things I found myself actually using were the timer and the equation solver. Simple commands that can save you opening up your internet browser and getting distracted from your work. The robot can answer a lot of the questions that Amazon's Alexa can, but here it's about expression. With Vector, we're talking about a robot that is more focused on its personality than its utility. For example, what is the square root of 324? One of the big features here is the camera on the front, and it opens up some interesting possibilities. When a new person introduces themselves to him, Vector will use the four directional mics to hear where they are, turn to face them, and scan the person's face to be able to recognise them. Not to mention this means that the robot can take a picture of whatever it's looking at, or if you want it to, can even turn around and take one of you. And while the facial recognition isn't as high calibre here as what you see on top tier smartphones, I wouldn't underestimate it. I've tried quite a few times to tell him I'm someone that I'm not, and he won't buy it. You're Aaron, not James. Then you've got entertainment, and I wasn't expecting this. The display on the front of the robot can also be used for a game of blackjack, and it works well. Vector can do a dance, he can give you a fist bump, which always brings a smile to people's faces, but I wouldn't say there's anything here to really get your teeth sunk into. Because the Vector is powered by its own Snapdragon chip, the possibilities do stretch further than with last year's Cosmo. From the site it looks like the company is planning a whole bunch of features, just ones that aren't available now. Things like Vector working as a mobile security camera, being able to recognise music and tell you the track name, or giving you full control over smart home gadgets. What I did think was cool though is the cube, which comes as part of the package. Vector can locate it and turn it on by himself, and he'll then play with it, bring it closer towards you, or even roll it over if you ask him to. Each face of the cube has a different symbol on it, which Vector can recognise and differentiate, which means that there's definitely some room down the line for interesting interactions as well as games you could play with it. 
I didn't find that battery life is particularly amazing, but one of the cooler aspects of the Vector is that when it's running low on battery, it'll find its own charger. And all of this just kind of adds to that feeling of it being alive. Alright guys, so I'm going to drop a link to the product page in the description below, so feel free to check that out. And as always, thanks a lot for watching, my name is Aaron, this is Mr Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.